percent. So I don't expect a return. Good morning from you. So we're going to talk about uh, nicotine. Um, how does it uh, start? Uh, nicotine usually means, in our socioeconomic bracket, it means smoking, but it could also mean uh, a, a gutka or tobacco chewing. So it usually starts in the youth. Young people in college days, they want to fit in, uh, appear cool or appear uh, macho. <clears throat> it starts as a curiosity. It starts as a harmless uh, exercise. But then since nicotine or tobacco is highly addictive, it uh, slowly seeps in and becomes part of their uh, personality and behavior. So how does it uh, first entice us? Well, usually, you know, our film stars, um, movies. Um, I was just watching a, a series yesterday, uh, which is uh, sometime in the 1950s and 60s, and everybody is smoking there. But if you notice, uh, even James Bond, uh, you know, used to uh, light a cigarette, have a drink, but uh, now, if you see the latest movies of James Bond, he doesn't smoke because slowly, slowly, the awareness that uh, films and heroes have a big impact on influencing people has come about and people have become more socially conscious. Surrogate advertising is, you know, when you directly don't uh, talk about the smoking. If you, those of you, uh, who are slightly older may remember the Charminar cigarettes, you know, then they got into Charms, the filter uh, version of their cigarette, and they were sponsoring uh, cricket matches, the spirit of freedom. Uh, I would say the freedom is from life, <laughs> because if you keep smoking, you're going to die. So they sponsored the cricket. They didn't say about anything about their cigarettes. But they said uh, the spirit of freedom, which was their byline for their cigarette advertising of charms. These are some uh, statistics, as you can see, that uh, it uh, kills a lot of people. 27% uh, <clears throat> of the cancer patients in India are uh, die because of tobacco. You can read the other uh, statistics. 13.5 lakh deaths are from India out of the total 80 global. Uh, then there is secondhand smoking. You know, when you are smoking around people, then uh, they also get impacted. So 10 lakh people in India, including 65,000 children, die because of secondhand smoke. Um, 11.8 lakh lung cancer deaths in India uh, are due to tobacco. That is nearly 60% of all lung cancer. 20% of all cancers are due to tobacco. Each cigarette that you smoke reduces, reduces your lifespan by 18 minutes. So you can calculate how many years you have lost in case some of you are smokers who are in this webinar. Now it's an addiction. So addiction means you have a very overwhelming uh, craving for uh, indulging in your activity, in activity, whatever addiction you may have, whether it is alcohol or gambling or drugs. So just, just see the image on the uh, cigarette. You know, it's so horrifying. But then every smoker sees this ignores it, opens the pack, and lights the cigarette. <clears throat> what could be the uh, such a strong urge? So it's an addiction. Though, And another uh, symptom of addiction is that the person who is addicted doesn't believe they are addicted. It's called denial. So they believe they can stop whenever they want. 
or they stop for a while or they want to reduce it and if they reduce from say 15 cigarettes a day to five cigarettes a day they feel or oh, they see i'm not addicted so there's no doubt it's an addiction like any other addiction and uh, it needs some sort of a, you need some sort of a professional support to get out of it there are people who get out of uh, smoking on their own but it is all, always good to get professional support so cigarette smoking and other tobacco intake harms every organ of the body it causes many diseases and generally impacts your health negatively if you stop smoking on the other hand you can add years to your life healthy life and uh, you can avoid the risk for smoking or nicotine re related diseases so we'll just quickly go through uh, what are the different ways it impacts your health adversely basically uh nicotine is addictive because it 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 uh, gets addicted to the brain your brain gets addicted to it uh, your your uh, dopamine receptors get used to the intake of uh, nicotine and if they don't get it uh, they suffer from withdrawal so every time you smoke a cigarette you feel satisfied because your receptors are fed by the dopamine which is uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, given by the nicotine and when you uh, don't get it you feel start feeling anxious you feel irritable and you get a craving and that's when you light your second cigarette it affects you know for example the ears uh it reduces uh, the oxygen supply to the inner ear and it can cause permanent or mild damage even leading to moderate hearing loss it affects your uh, eyes it can cause uh, night vision uh, problems and uh, you know it, it restricts the uh, production of certain chemical which is necessary to see at night you can also have the risk of developing cataracts and other eye problems mouth obviously uh smokers have a lot of oral uh, problems like um, mouth sores ulcers gum disease uh, you are more likely to have uh, cavities in your teeth you are more likely to lose your teeth at a younger age and of course cancers of the mouth and throat a lot of people talk about the smoker's face you know uh, a smoker's face is typically uh, has a dry skin it's not so elastic it's more wrinkled and has stretch marks so when you are uh, say 35 40 you look 5 or 10 years uh, older than you are so every time you you smoke your heart starts pumping uh, more and um, so and uh, since the heart works harder it starts getting weaker and it's not able to pump to uh, adequate blood to other parts of the body apart from that the carbon monoxide which you inhale from cigarette smokes uh, leads to lack of oxygen which even makes the heart work even harder so you are at risk of uh, developing heart problems including heart attacks so <clears throat> sticky blood means uh, smoking nicotine makes your blood thick and sticky it can lead to blood clots it can lead to strokes and uh, also of course uh, heart attack nicotine also uh, causes an increase in uh, unhealthy fats and cholesterol in your blood 
as uh, over time when you are smoking your uh, it, these fatty substances deposit on the walls of your arteries and it uh, restricts the normal flow of blood to the heart to the brain and the legs and um, blockage of these vessels can lead to uh, apart from what i already talked about earlier strokes heart attack but can also cause uh, in some cases amputation of your feet obviously when we inhale uh, smoke into our uh, lungs it uh, causes inflammation damages the uh, tissues and uh, your uh, lungs uh, uh, become impacted uh, your breathing becomes difficult you find it difficult to climb steps go for long marathons or even for a normal walk and uh, you have chronic what is called uh, smoker's cough emphysema is a is a uh, a disease that impacts people who have smoked cigarettes for a long time it is uh, causes severe shortness of breath you need sometimes oxygen to survive and it, you can even die of that you have other uh, respiratory infections due to smoking you are you tend to get uh, very easily colds and respiratory problems compared to normal people who don't smoke now it impacts your uh, genetic uh, makeup or dna and uh, that is what causes your uh, body to develop cancer cancer is is uh, something when your dna gets damaged and uh, that uh, the the body is not able to repair itself and lung cancer is usually the result of this you have a bigger belly it can lead to type 2 of uh, type 2 diabetes and uh, uh, even and if you have diabetes then it is more difficult to control it <clears throat> uh, for uh, women uh it it impacts uh, uh them in in the sense that their skin their hair and memory problems uh it's more difficult to get pregnant or have a healthy baby uh it can lead to early menopause okay, there is a question now this is something which um, hopefully will uh, uh, inspire you to stop smoking it causes erectile dysfunction and uh, that is a big concern to young people okay so your immune system is impacted if you have any uh, 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 injuries it takes longer to heal muscles broken bones get also become longer to heal now we come to the part where why we uh, how to stop smoking so first uh, it's important to know why we are why we want to stop do you want to stop because you want to be more healthy you want to stop because you want to save money you want to stop because you want to save your family from second hand smoke so you ask these questions 
why do you don't like smoking? And if you don't smoke, what will you miss? How is smoking affecting your health? How is smoking affecting my family and me? And what will happen if I continue to smoke? Is it not just the finances, but also the health? Plus I will die earlier. Uh, I smell bad around them. How will my life improve if I quit? Not only health-wise, but you know, there are many places we go to. For example, if we are in a meeting and the meeting extends to more than 30 minutes or 45 minutes, we start getting irritable because uh, we are getting that craving or urge to smoke. So we have to find excuse to walk out. It's, it can be quite embarrassing and also uh, doesn't give a good impression. Um, now, nowadays, if you go to malls, airports, uh, earlier, whichever airports uh, had smoking zones, even those airports have now restricted. So there are many places, suppose you're going for a long haul uh, flight from here to USA or UK. And even if you have a stopover at, a, at an airport, you cannot smoke. So the whole flight, you will, instead of enjoying the flight, you will be all the time anxious and irritated. Any other reason you have for smoking? So when you have the reasons to stop smoking, then it, uh, keep, you keep reminding yourself that, see, if I stop smoking, these are the benefits I'm going to get. Now, when you stop, you're going to have what is called nicotine withdrawal because your body is so used to the nicotine. But remember, the nicotine withdrawal only lasts uh, for a few days or a few weeks. And during this time, you will may feel depressed. It is not a clinical depression. You will just feel uh, like as if something is missing in your life. You may have sleep problems. You will uh, get uh, irritable and cranky. You will probably lash out at people around you. You will be feeling restless and nervous. You will have maybe uh, not be able to think clearly. And uh, you will get huge temptation to smoke to alleviate these uh, feelings. Now, you have to remember that these are just temporary. They are not going to last. However powerful these feelings are, they are not going to last. At the end of this session, I'll give you one tip, uh, which is recommended by Nicotine Anonymous, just like you have Alcoholics Anonymous and um, other than on 12-step groups. If you feel that you need support, uh, there is NRT, that is nicotine replacement therapy. You have patches, you have uh, chewing gum, you have uh, lozenges, or you can go to a doctor or a psychiatrist and uh, they can uh, uh, give you uh, a tablet which reduces the craving. So how do you start making your own personal plan to quit smoking? One is you set a date and you stick to it. You don't have to start today, but say two days from now or next weekend. Now you already have that list of uh, reasons why you want to quit. Remember that, reinforce that in your mind and start on that day. Now you identify your triggers. Normally we want to smoke when we are going to the toilet in the morning or we want to uh, smoke when we have a coffee or after a meal. So, List down those uh, triggers because they will be important for you uh, during the withdrawal stages. Now you have to tell your uh, family and friends that you're going to quit. Now, uh, there are various reasons for this. Number one, your family, you warn them that you're going to be irritable to some time. Number two, 
If you tell your family and friends that you are going to quit, then you're going to find it difficult to return to quitting because of your uh, pride or whatever. So uh, these are the two reasons why you need to tell people around you that you're going to quit. Now, these are your uh, triggers. Uh, apart from the, uh, the, the coffee, the meal, the toilet, uh, you feel stressed, you want to smoke, you feel anxious, you want to smoke. When you're feeling bored or you're feeling you have a fight and after that you want to cool down. Then there are uh, habits, you know. You smoke, uh, as I said, after coffee, meal, or you uh, take a break for, at your work uh, during or after uh, drinking alcohol, or when you're talking on the phone. And then uh, there are certain places that you uh, smoke, tend to smoke more, at a social event, in a bar, uh, when you uh, see someone else smoking, especially during withdrawal stage, when you are near someone who's smoking and the smell of that cigarette is going to trigger a huge craving. So you have to be ready to fight these uh, cravings. And here are some tips. First of all, it's not very hard, okay? You may think it is uh, impossible, or very difficult. Uh, it is difficult, no doubt, but there are uh, thousands and millions of people who have quit. Uh, the first part of this uh, presentation was to inform you what is nicotine. So that is why it is good to know that it is poisonous, and it is uh, officially uh, by medical bodies identified as an, as a, an addictive chemical. <clears throat> um, you need to know that why you continue to smoke is only because you're addicted. And the only way, you know, uh, addiction and craving go together. So when you're addicted to a substance and you stop taking it or stop indulging in, in it like gambling, then you have a craving to go back to it. So addiction is basically based on your chemical uh, uh, addiction. Understand how it affects you. Understand how many cigarettes you sm smoke how it is impacting you medically, financially. Now, you may think that, okay, I have to uh, pay my taxes this month. I have to go through a, a deal. I have to um, go through a breakup. Uh, your excuses will keep coming up. And uh, actually, cigarettes uh, don't uh, help you in dealing with uh, stress. They're actually adding to your stress by adding more load on your body. Imagine if you don't smoke. Uh, you can have so many other opportunities. You, for example, as I said, you can attend meetings without... Uh, getting irritable. You can talk to people for a long time without uh, having to excuse yourself or going out. Uh, you, can, you will be smelling better. You won't be smelling uh, of tobacco all the time. So it's going to change your life and look at it in a more positive approach. So you write down the reasons why you, you can't uh, stop now and don't quit for anybody else. Don't quit because your family or your loved ones are urging you to stop using tobacco. That may help, but mostly it, it, the nagging only gets you more irritable. So, though they are going to benefit, 
but it is you who will benefit the most. And uh, if you quit for yourself, then you have a better chance of staying quit. Look at it as a gift you're giving yourself. Um, you know, we give gifts to other people, but what about giving a gift to yourself? So recovery is a gift and it's a gift, not a one-time gift. It's a gift for life. You are going to lead a more healthy, happier, joyful life with better relationships, less medical expenses, less hospitalizations, and uh, a longer life. Uh, before quitting, uh, you plan your day. You know, um, maybe you uh, avoid going uh, out with your certain friends. Maybe you stop going to uh, a bar for some time. Maybe you uh, pick up a book which you've been wanting to read for a long time. Maybe see a serial on Netflix which you have been wanting to see. Uh, apart from that, look at it also as a challenge, apart from a gift. Those of you who are uh, uh, spiritually minded or religious can pray for the willingness. Are you willing to stop? Are you willing to go to any length? And tell yourself that, yes, I'm willing. If you are willing, you can move forward. And if you're willing, you will get the gift. If you're not willing, then it is just a half-hearted effort and it's not going to help. Imagine your life without uh, having to, uh, you know, reaching out for cigarettes, buying cigarettes, stocking cigarettes, the sense of relief you're going to get. Uh, and as time goes by, your willingness will be reinforced. There's no perfect time. You can start today. You can start tomorrow. Just fix your date. If you're not going to quit right away, you can try cutting down. But personally, uh, I know it doesn't work. Uh, it is only elongating the craving period and uh, then satisfying your craving by lighting your next cigarette. Don't minimize or deny that you have a problem. Uh, you have a big problem. Uh, as I told you earlier, addiction and uh, denial go together. So. It's okay to tell yourself and others that you are an addict. You're no better or worse than a drug addict or an alcoholic. Now quitting is an investment. You're going to see rewards throughout your life. Rewards in terms of uh, health, Rewards in terms of uh, financial uh, savings. Rewards in terms of better relationships. Now, I'm not going to smoke. Because if you tell yourself, I'm not going to smoke for the rest of my life, it looks very onerous and very difficult. You imagine yourself in a pub and you imagine that, man, I'm not going to, I'm going to have a beer, but I cannot smoke. You imagine yourself on the beach of Goa and you're not smoking. So uh, it, it looks very difficult. So just say that for today, I'm not going to smoke. And next morning you say, for today, I'm not going to smoke. So when you take it at smaller uh, bits, it is much easier. And remember that this discomfort or this craving 
or this irritability is not going to last. Normally we say, okay, I'm feeling irritable, I'll just have one. But that one becomes two and then it's a chain reaction. So look at this figure, a pack a day for 10 years is 73,000 cigarettes. And none of them, 73,000 cigarettes, not even one solved any problem of yours. They only created problems. Smoking or not smoking is a choice. And if you choose not to smoke just for today, you're choosing to be healthier and abstinent for today. Those of you who um, believe in God, you can pray for your strength and willingness. Doesn't mean you have to go to a temple, but just pray within your the privacy of your heart. And uh, nicotine comes, you know, physically in a paper, uh, tobacco wrapped in a paper, the butt has also got a lot of uh, harmful substances, though they say it reduces uh, the impact of nicotine. But when you throw the butt, it actually causes environmental damage. And uh, recovery means a spiritual, uh, you've got something which is spiritual. Initially, you may feel that something is missing in your life. Something which is give, has been giving you pleasure that has been removed from your life. But that's okay, that's normal. And uh, the three main triggers of again relapsing are called halt. When you're hungry, have food. When you're angry, uh, give your pause. When you're lonely, I don't mean. Uh, lonely in terms of uh, being with the company of other smokers, but when you're feeling lonely and when you're tired, these are the three triggers normally. So avoid these three triggers. Now you can have water, you can have uh, smoothies, you, you can eat. You, normally your appetite will increase, so you can eat uh, something healthy. Uh, drink a lot of orange juice or uh, because uh, smoking also depletes vitamin C in your body. So you may experience uh, because your appetite is going to increase, you may experience a weight gain. So that you can uh, manage. But the other problems like cancer and emphysema, there's no cure. So, and expect to feel uh, irritable, angry. When you are in withdrawal, your whole perception changes. You feel that people are against you. You feel that everything not things are not working out in life. You start getting angry at small issues. So you always have a look like connect these reactions to your smoke, uh, quitting smoking. And there are other things you can do. Uh, you can uh, develop relationships. Uh, then you, there is a fellowship called Nicotine Anonymous. I don't know where you people are placed, but in some cities it is there. Otherwise, you can join meetings online. Uh, there are world, It's a worldwide fellowship, and you can choose a meeting which suits your uh, timing. And uh, you can join those meetings and they share their experience, strength, and hope. As I said, HALT. Avoid um, uh, doing, trying to do everything or multitasking at the same time. Take a break, but don't go for a coffee break where people are smoking. 
support your uh, surround yourself with supportive people who support your decision to stop uh, as i said you inform your family and friends that you stop so especially your family you tell them that you you will have to tolerate my irritability for some time go to places which do not allow you to smoke There are many places now. Just going to the mall is one. Um, then you keep something handy in your, like a squeegee ball, uh, you know, which you can uh, uh, play with. Don't get bored. Explore new activities. Find new hobbies. Take a walk. enroll in some class this is a good time to enjoy the sense of uh, adventure the sense of newness uh you can uh, start eating or chewing some apart from chewing gum not necessarily nicotine chewing gum but uh, sugar free uh, chewing gum you get carrots things like that you are also uh, going to get a craving for uh, uh coffee or tea so in the earlier stages it's uh, perhaps okay to drink more coffee or tea because they are definitely less harmful than nicotine avoid drinking alcohol because uh, alcohol is not only associated with nicotine a lot but once alcohol goes in your system your judgment gets impaired and uh, then you your mind starts telling you that it's okay i'll just smoke for today and from tomorrow i'll uh, stop this is a normal way people uh, relapse change your routine uh, earlier your routine was fixed around uh, smoking now change the pattern and uh, give yourself uh, rewards tell yourself that i have the guts you feel positive some reinforce some positivity in your uh, mind and don't feel uh, that oh poor me uh, now earlier i had uh, one problem now I have so many problems no you are actually going going towards a, a positive way of life so i told you that i'll give you a tip uh, the tip is that when you stop uh, smoking say you stopped in the morning after half an hour which is or, or 20 minutes whatever is the gap you are normally give between two cigarettes you will get the craving again so what you do is don't deny the craving don't tell yourself i have no craving but recognize it acknowledge it understand it see it coming feel it oh tell yourself oh this is craving and craving will come it will uh, last just for a minute or two and then it will go away after 20 minutes again the craving will come again you acknowledge it recognize it tell yourself this is craving let it come feel it and let it go as time goes by in a few days time that half an hour gap will increase to 40 minutes then 50 minutes then 1 hour now you see what you have done is you understood the cycle of addiction the cycle of craving and after about 12 to 15 days you will rarely get craving unless you are in a situation which has triggers in it like going to the pub or whatever you are used to associating your smoking with that activity so this is the tip i was uh, i've helped a lot of people in this 
acknowledge the craving, feel it, let it come, let it go. Don't light a cigarette because when you light a cigarette, again, it starts the same thing. Light a cigarette, again, the craving will come. Again, you light a cigarette. So the trick is not to light the cigarette. Acknowledge, recognize the craving. Let it come, it will go away. It will come again. Let it come, it will go away. So this is the tip. Now don't think that uh, once you've stopped Addiction is highly relapse prone. You may relapse, but it's okay. Some lot of people relapse after a month, two months, six months of stopping. But relapse doesn't mean it's the end of the road. So if you relapse, you get back into the program again. So these are some we'll reinforce uh, some of the tips. Look at quitting only for at one day at a time, not for lifetime. Accept the cravings, be aware of the cravings, and don't give in, let it come and go. It will come in waves and go. They do not last, they pass. As time goes by, the craving frequency and intensity will decrease. Your sense of joy, fulfillment, and general health, when you're healthy, you feel more positive, will slowly overtake the cravings. And after some time, you will be free from the craving. Definitely quitting is not easy. I would say that uh, stopping cigarettes is more difficult than quitting alcohol. Uh, you may not succeed the first time. It's okay if you have uh, relapsed. Don't get disheartened. Try again. So if you have any questions, Hi everyone, please uh, feel free to ask your questions in the chat or the Q&A section. I think everybody stopped smoking or they have decided to continue smoking. So we have a few questions in the Q&A section. Yeah. So for everyone else's benefit, I'll just uh, read the answer that was given for that. So one question is, are there any medicines which stops the yeah, urge to smoke? I've answered and, that. Uh, so I've answered that. 
Yes, sir. Can you also um, uh, answer out loud for the benefit of everyone who's listening in or not able uh, to see? Uh, yeah, one of the most common medicines is called Champix. You need a doctor's or a psychiatrist's uh, prescription for that. Uh, Champix is the name of the medicine. Otherwise, as I said, uh, you get chewing gum and you get uh, lozenges or patches. For the chewing gum and patches, you don't get a, you don't, don't need a prescription. Uh, you can just walk into any medical store. The other one is what can be the activities that one can try during the intense craving phase? Yes. So the answer I have said is uh, uh, you can go for a walk, exercising, reading, writing, drinking fluids, uh, or you know if you are into any sports, tennis, badminton, whatever. Yeah, so I'm answering. You can read out the next one. Uh, sure. So the next one is uh, is long term break and restarting again, and going on a cycle. How to stop it? Well, that is addiction. Uh, whether you restart after half an hour, or if you restart after a week or six months, that is the nature of addiction. Because normal people, once they stop, they will not restart. So that means you have a, a problem and if you're not able to achieve it on your own, I suggest you consult a professional, uh, some counselor, and uh, he will also probably refer you to a doctor for prescription of Champix. Uh, so the person who restarts is a sure sign that th there is an addiction. Yeah. Can you also see my replies, Riddhi? Yes, sir. we can see the replies. So there's another one. If we are not a chain smoker, how can we realize we are going on the path of addiction? Yeah, this kind of denial is called minimizing. Uh, it's like, you know, alcoholics say that uh, I don't beat my wife, so I'm not so bad. 
I don't drink during office hours, so I am not an alcoholic. I don't drink in the morning, so I am not an alcoholic. So the fact is, why would anyone indulge in a harmful activity like smoking? If you, uh, if you, uh, you know, that indicates that there is a problem. Uh, why, why would, why would he drink uh, fruit juice instead of smoking? Next. So the other one that we have is, uh, I'm a smoker for over 10 years. In between, I was able to quit for two years on a stretch. Once I picked up the habit again, I'm unable to stop. Feels like I've lost my willpower to stand against the urge. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, first of all, con congratulations for having stopped for two years. That means you can do it. Uh, secondly, uh, let me tell you, it has got nothing to do with willpower. Uh, willpower means, uh, you know, actually addicts, uh, even including smokers, have a lot of willpower. If the shop is closed, they will go and find another shop. Uh, if it is in the middle of the night, they'll for somehow get their cigarette. Their whole family is telling them to stop smoking but they exercise their uh, self-will and uh, continue to smoke. So you have a lot of willpower. What you need is the opposite of willpower. You need to surrender. You need to surrender to the fact that you have a problem. You need to surrender to somebody's advice. You need to surrender to, if you believe in a higher power, who is going to give you the willingness to stop. So uh, maybe some professional support will help. Uh, willpower also means you believe that you have the will and the power to stop on your own. Probably you don't. So you need support. So if we take help from somebody else and stop believing in our willpower and surrender to the advice of somebody else, we will achieve our goal. So we have one more question here. Uh, taking a break for a year and restarting again, how dangerous it would be? Uh, I think it's self-explanatory. It is dangerous because it takes over uh, 10 years for the effect of smoking to actually you get rid of all the effects, medical effects of smoking once you stop. So if you stop for some time and start again, it is only reinforcing all the adverse impact of uh, smoking. So it is dangerous, um, as dangerous as maybe uh, if you had not stopped. Um, whatever the latent benefits you got had not only been ne negated, but probably triggered onto a worse situation. Another thing is that people who stop for some time tell themselves that, see, I have the, as somebody said, willpower or uh, I'm not addicted because I can stop. So I don't have a problem. But the fact is that he restarted, which indicates that there is an addiction. So when your denial gets stronger, then it is, becomes more difficult to accept that you need to stop the addiction. So that way it is harmful also, psychologically and medically. The next one is whenever I'm alone, I need to smoke. Can you help in this? I have nothing to do at that time. Nothing to do. I don't believe that. There are so many things you can do. As I said, you can read, write, exercise, meditate, watch TV. So many things to do. So unless we are living in space, even those people, space men also have a lot of things to do. It's got, this is again an excuse. I have nothing to do. Uh, if you, I mean, nobody has nothing to do. You can always find something to do. So please find something to do. I'm sure you have a TV at home. You, uh, you can do something. If you can go for a walk, you can adopt a dog, you can do so many things. 
the next one is will stopping someone forcefully without his will impact adversely mentally first of all it's not possible uh, to force anyone how will you force because addicts will very cleverly find ways to uh, smoke they will hide they will lie they will cheat they will manipulate but they will continue so unless uh, you know you can give ultimatums that if you don't stop i will do this i will do that that may uh, motivate that person but forcing means what unless you lock the person in a room you cannot really force a person and especially addicts are very intelligent and clever they'll find ways and means to continue an effect may, uh, mentally means what on the one hand you are uh, concerned about their mental makeup uh, so you want him him or her to be also very happy with you and then you are forcing things on them uh, it doesn't go together is another uh, question are there nicotine anonymous groups in bangalore if yes how do i get in touch with them to keep myself motivated internet uh i think bangalore will have otherwise as i said nowadays uh, online meetings are there bangalore has lot of groups uh, definitely one of the largest number of groups in alcoholics anonymous and narcotics anonymous i'm not sure about the nicotine anonymous but uh, maybe there are in bangalore but you don't have to go physically uh if you go to a uh, uh, narcotics anonymous meeting you will find many ex smokers there you can talk to them i think uh, one final one is there a medical test to know the state of my lungs of course lung function test is there so i don't know why you want that you want that to you already feeling you have a problem or you want to stop only when the <laughs> problem is too big or what or if it, if it is not too big continue smoking but uh, you have to go to a pulmonologist who will uh, ask you it is called a lung function test a simple test you bre- uh, blow into a machine and it tells you how well your lungs are functioning and you can also get a chest x are there any more questions that anybody wants to ask sir i think that's it for the questions then i think we can close the session here then okay thank I- you all uh, wishing you all a very happy healthy smoke free life and thank you riddhi for coordinating so well Thank you so much sir for taking the time to join us today and thank you everyone as well for joining the session and interacting with us learning with us uh, we hope we helped you in some way and uh, have a good day everyone thank you so much